Hi, everyone. It's Melody Lane. Welcome. And I'm really, really excited to have uh, Anna Rose Johnson and Jeremy Crystal from Cricket Headquarters here. They're going to, we're going to get in behind the cut. They're going to tell us more. They're going to answer some of our questions we've been asking. I'm just so excited. First, I would like you to, Anna Rose, can you start us off with what is your role at Cricket? Sure. Hi, I'm Anna Rose, and I am a platform marketing manager at Cricut. And what that really means is that all of the fun products that you guys see in store, I help promote those. So anytime you see an ad or you see a blog post or you see Melody talk about the machine, I'm somewhere in the background facilitating that work. Um, I've been at Cricut for eight years. And I actually started as a project designer. So all of the pretty projects that you see in design space, that used to be my job every day. I would get to craft every day. Now I still get to craft, but not every day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember you when you're in charge of all the images and you write who to go to. <laughs> yep. um, and Jeremy Crystal, what is your role at Cricut? How long have you worked at Cricut? So I'm the VP of hardware engineering, which means I manage all the engineers that design the products, the accessories. If you can touch it, we probably had a hand in it. And I've been at Cricut, it'll be 12 years in August. I even predate wow. the fiche at Cricut. Oh yeah, that's awesome. I'm excited to have you guys here. Today we're talking about the Maker 3 and the Explorer 3, and we wanna know a little bit behind the scenes of that. So what was your role with the new Maker 3 and the Explorer 3 machines? Jeremy, you wanna go first? Sure, so I had a team in hardware engineering that was designing and developing and testing and evolving the Maker 3 and the Air 3. And I would get in the weeds with them and we'd talk about how to solve problems and improve things and how we should approach them. And so just working hand in hand with the teams to bring the products to reality. Awesome, and the Anna Rose? So all of the imagery, all of the videos that you've saw, probably seen for the new machines, um, I helped with the strategy and the execution of those. Um, so even this image that's my background, that was one of the creations that the creative team made to bring the Explore machine to life. So if you go into Michael's or you go into Joanne's or your favorite craft store, you'll probably see this image in relation to the Explore 3. And then you'll see a jungle scene when it's related to the Maker 3. So uh, worked on all of that. If you saw Ashish's announce video, when he uh, uh, told the world about the new machines, I helped write the script for that, um, created the background, all of that. So it's, it's a lot of the little things to make the visuals and the messaging come to life for the new machines. Awesome. What is your favorite feature, Anna Rose? Of the new machines? Yes. So I, I hope that you guys will get to try this because explaining it is kind of difficult. But when you're cutting a long cut, like when you're cutting up to 12 feet, right? The older machines, when you would finish a cut, the mat would come out and then you would unload, right? But when you're doing a long cut, now with the new machines, it finishes behind the machine, which gives you the option to trim it off before you unload. And I, it's such a small thing, but it makes it so much easier to complete your project and to, remem to remember to trim it and to get like that clean line for your next uh -huh. cut. I just think that's such a, like a small thing, but it's genius, Jeremy, good job. <laughs> <laughs> And Jeremy, what is your favorite feature? Oh, you're muted. This may sound a little cliche, but uh, I really love the speed. Um, That's a big thing for me. And it's not just the speed, it's the acceleration and the speed that make the cuts go faster. And uh, I agree with a lot of people who tried it, who say, once you, you've done it, you can't go back because it's like watching grass grow to go back to the old machines. It's so yeah. true. I remember the first time I saw it cutting in real life and I, I jumped because it was so much faster than what I was expecting. And, and they're like, oh yeah, that's, that's nothing like watch the acceleration. So what Jeremy's talking about, the acceleration is how fast the carriage moves from like one point to another point, not even like how it's going in and out. 
it goes so fast. <laughs> yeah. Today I was using the Explore 3 and my son was here and I think it was his first time actually watching the new machine and it kind of scared him. He's like, whoa, that's fast. <laughs> like, and I was using a mat. You know, I wasn't oh, yeah. even using the smart materials and the mat just moves out in and out so fast and the carriage just moves so fast. It looks like double speed. It's, it's weird on my eyes to see it go so fast. I feel like I'm watching a video in high speed. And it's the accelerations on the little cuts where it's just accelerating and stopping and turning and all those things that also speed up the cut, which I really like. Yeah. You know, uh, Melody, I saw one of your videos and you said something like, I know that it looks like I'm filming this in double speed, but I'm not. <laughs> That's just yeah. the movie. I had to keep saying that because it I didn't want people to think it was. And it was hard for me to believe it was going so fast. <laughs> I was shocked. Okay, what are the key changes with the new machines? Jeremy, you want to start us off? Yeah, so the machines may look similar to the previous error and maker machines, but there's a lot that's different um, in them. So we had to look at the whole machine because we're trying to run things a lot faster. We're trying to do matless material, really long cuts. And previously we did 24 inches long. That was the longest we could do. And now we've gone to you know five, six feet, 12 feet. So these, these are a lot bigger challenges. So we had to look at the machine tolerances and, and tighten things up. Um, we had to make material changes to the machine because we're feeding this material in and out so fast. It was literally cutting the side guides, cutting into the side guides pretty badly. And so we had to change the side guide material so it wouldn't wear out while we're doing all this, um, all this matless material. Uh, then there was the firmware updates that it isn't, it isn't just um, like we could just turn it on. Um, and, and flip a switch to, to make things go faster and do matless material, or we would have. But in the firmware, we actually had to do quite a bit of research and development to figure out how to do better path planning at these high speeds and high accelerations so that we stay on track with a, with a high precision cut like we expect. Um, then there are the higher torque motors. And again, other materials that change, the pinch rollers, the drive rollers, a lot of things change to make this accurate, smooth, easy, and, and deliver on that cricket promise of you know ease of use awesome i really like what jeremy said about how if we could have just changed something in the software or flipped a switch in the firmware to make the um, previous models work without a mat or cut smart materials flawlessly they would have done it <laughs> um but this is a the whole new a whole new generation of machines that they had to completely rework so even though we made it look the same on the outside because like we didn't want you to have to buy a new bag and we didn't want you to have to find a new spot for it in your craft room, right? We kept the same footprint, but they completely changed it under the hood. Uh, and that goes into my next question. Uh, there's a rumor that the maker would be the last machine we would need. Can you share more info on why other models can't just get an update. And I think you've answered some of that now. It's been so hard for me to tell people that it's not just the software, there's so much more. But I don't know all the details like you guys do, like what Jeremy just said. So this is helping out a lot to hopefully help people understand that it's not just another, you didn't just copy the machine. Didn't just slap a new coat of paint on it. Right, yeah. Right. So there's a couple of big things for me that uh, stand out as why we couldn't just enable the old machines to do everything these do. I mean, one is just pure power. I mean, we didn't have the, the amperage available in those machines. We didn't have the motors. So we went to bigger motors on these machines to get the accelerations and velocities and not stall the machine. And the, the old machines just don't have those motors and they just don't have that capability. The other thing was as you load matless material and as you go faster, it's hard not to have the machine crumple your material up and, and feed crooked and things like that. That's, that's one of the big challenges. And we, you know, we could tell people, hey, just put malice material in your old machines. But I think they'd have a bad experience a lot uh, in terms of wasting their material. And we know how important that is to people and how expensive materials are. And so we're really conscious of that and spend a lot of time to make sure that when you put material in this machine, it's going to take care of you. It's going to do what you want it to do and, and have a predictable, reliable um, use of the machine uh, and the materials. And they all work together as a system 
to give you this great user experience and just to make creating easier. Um, with the old machines, I I think if you wanted to spend a lot of time, you might be able to get something to work, but that's not the kind of experience we wanted to you know, put in front of our customers. Um, I'd, I'd, well, I'd like to go off on that and say, I did try it on my original maker and I recorded it and I put this video out and I thought, oh, so many people are saying it works, it works. So I did it and it crumpled up, just like you said. And I wasted like eight inches of my smart material when it wasn't fast either. It wasn't it wasn't the experience that the Maker 3 has with the smart material. It may work some of the time and you may be able to finesse it, but it's- It's not worth it. It's not designed to, <laughs> and, and there's no, I would not guarantee it. I wouldn't recommend no. it. No, right. And for and the speed, you won't, you can't get the speed out of the no. other machines for sure. Uh, Jeremy touched on something about time. Like at Cricut, we think a lot about our customer's time and how much time you're using on certain parts of the process and the cutting process is a, a big time suck. And mm -hmm. not only it, because the older machines cut slower, but putting it on a mat and being able to feed it in without a mat, like that just that whole process makes things faster. And to your point, Melody, yeah, maybe the material can feed into the machine, but it wasn't designed to cut without a mat. So like we don't have settings in design space, so it could cut through to your floor of your machine or like over time as smart materials are going in and out of the maker or the Explorer Air 2, it could cut into the mat guides like Jeremy was talking about. Like that's all stuff that we upgraded for maker three and Explorer three. And the cut quality just won't be the same. You'll end up with cuts that don't meet back together when they close. You, you won't be happy with the quality. And we know our, our members are passionate about the quality and the precision. And so that's why we put so much effort. I mean, we spent years developing these and it wasn't just a trivial matter to, to get these things out there and to make a great user experience. That, that's what we pride ourselves on is make it easy for you guys to create, right? Yeah, I love how Cricut spends so much time on a machine. They don't just uh, say, have an idea. Oh, let's put out a machine and six months later, they put it out. They spend years making it the best it can be for us. Well, so, and there's, there's even a team in between Jeremy and me, right? And that's our quality assurance team. And they spend months and months and months testing everything you can imagine. And they come back to us with recommendations and then, and Jeremy changes things and then it goes back to the quality assurance team, right? Like there's that, that team that they are solely focused on you having the best experience possible. Yes. And I appreciate that. <laughs> so many others. Thank you. Okay. We don't have a lot of time left. So I have one last question for each of you. What is your top cricket tip? What tip can you give all of us? Go ahead, Anna. Should I start? Well, you, you'll probably have, you probably have way better tips than I do. So maybe I should go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you're cutting long cuts, uh, I think a lot of people are worried about actually being able to apply the long cut to a wall. And I learned this a few years ago, but look for videos on the hinge method. Have you heard of this? Yes. It's, it's really easy to apply a long cut if you use the hinge method. And I actually did a window in my bathroom. I did a giant floral window and I used the hinge method and made sure that all of my flowers lined up right across the whole window and it made it so much easier. So don't be intimidated. Um, use the hinge method if you're applying long cuts. Thank you. So I, I probably can't stop at just one tip, Melody, but okay. <laughs> in terms of the new machines, <laughs> machines, I would say um, cutting your material off square at the top where you're feeding it in uh, really helps for it to feed straight. So that's important if you have a good uh, trimmer to, to trim off your material straight. But in general, um, so my favorite tools in Cricut uh, design space are weld, slice, and attach. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I don't have time to explain them now, but if, if you don't know how to use those, go on YouTube, find out how to use them, because you can create all kinds of new images and projects and you know, merge things together that, that you couldn't do before. So I, I love those. And then 
my other tip is don't be afraid to try new things. Uh, I mean, in the last year, I've created my first heat transfer, you know, iron on t-shirt and just thought it was so easy. I was like, why didn't I do this sooner? I mean, crickets just made it easy for one thing. And so I thought that was really cool. And I just got my mug press and I'm looking forward to trying that out here in the next uh, few weeks. Awesome. Those are good tips, Jeremy. I, I think weld, attach, and slice are like the bread and butter of design space. And Melody has some really great videos showing you how to use all of those features. If I can add one more, I love the contour. Yeah, I was thinking that too, contour too. Yeah, because you can look at images in design space and if you don't really like certain parts of it, you can hide them. So like if you, or if you like a word in an image, you can hide everything else except for that word. So one time I liked how the word love was written in this image and I just hid everything else with contour and I just used just the word love. <laughs> That's a great tip. Awesome. Can I ask one more question, Anna Rose? What do you say to people who still have their cricket in their box? Oh. <laughs> To the people who still have their cricket in their box, it is not as scary as you think it is. And it's I promise you that if you take it out of the box and you go through what at Cricket we call the out of box experience. So you go into design space, you click the hamburger menu and it says machine setup. Click on that and it takes you through every step, like literally hand holding through every step of setting up your machine and making your first cut so that by the end of that whole process, you have a finished image that you cut, that you made, that you can then add to a project. And I, I think don't be afraid, get it out of the box and try it. And don't be afraid of messing up. This is, you're learning a new skill, right? Mm -hmm. Like my son just started soccer this year and he's mad that he can't do a head, a head bump into the, into the goal. That's because he hasn't tried it, right? He hasn't practiced enough. So just like you're learning a new skill, that's what your cricket is. You're learning something new. Thank you. And thank you both for doing this. I hope we can do this again soon. I'm sure everybody loves seeing behind the cut and seeing behind the scenes at cricket. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Melody, for letting us be here. We're sad that we haven't been able to see our cricket fans, friends in real life for the past two years. So thanks for letting us join you today. Thank you. You're muted, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a habit of doing that. It's, it's nice to be able to give people a little uh, insights into what we do every day and, and how, how challenging it is to, to make these machines work really well. Yes, thank you. We, we really appreciate it. Bye, thank you. Bye.